Hello, everyone. This video is part two of Patent Citations Backward and Forward. In this video, we'll talk about forward citations, how to start with a particular patent and find any later patents or articles that cite to it. As in part one, backward citations, we'll use as our starting point this 1987 patent, US 468183. It's the basic patent for a drug best known as Lipitor. So let's get started. I'll begin in U.S. Patents Full Text by searching for that patent using the command PN US 468183. And when we have the record, I'll click the Citations tab. And on that tab, there's a link for citing patents. You'd find a similar link in any of the 31 full text patent databases or in IFI claims. And here we have the list of citing patents. In this case, it's a fairly long list because this was an important patent. Now, to view any of these patents, the first way we can do it is to just click on any of these numbers, and that runs a search for it across all of the patent databases on Dialog. We get five hits, and even though we're only in the database U.S. Patents Full Text, we also get the records from IFI Claims, and IMPADOC, as well as two Derwent databases. We can choose any one of these records and learn more about it by hovering over Preview, or we can click the title to view the record, or we can download it. And when we're finished, we click up here on Back to Your Previous Document to get back to the list of citing patents. Then we can repeat that process by clicking on any one of the citing patent numbers. But there are a lot of them, and you might find it more useful to create a set for all of these citing patents so you can work with them all at once. And we would do that by running a search for US 468183 as a cited patent, which would be the search field CTPN. Looking at the list, we see that these citing patents are from a variety of patenting authorities, including the US and also the EP, Japan, the WO, and China. And so in order to run the CTPN search, we'd go into the full text patent databases for all of those countries. But I suggest it would be easiest to create a custom database shortcut, as mentioned in part one, that will let us just go into all of the 31 full text patent databases at once. Or I could instead use Impadoc for this CTPN search if I don't need the abstracts or full text for the patents. Once I'm in these databases, I can just run a search for my original patent number, but instead of a PN search, I'll use the field CTPN to search for it as a cited patent. And that will get all the records where US 468183 is a cited patent, which in other words means that these are the records for the citing patents, the ones that cite our original patent. You can see this patent is still being cited into 2020. So you can scroll through these or do any of the things you would do with a results list. You could filter them using any of the narrow by filters. You could add terms to the search if you like. Or you could decide to just download any or all of them. And those are the two ways to get all of the citing patents. The other type of forward citation would be the citing literature. That is, any kind of article or non-patent literature that cites US 468183. And this search is quite different because citing literature is not recorded in the patent databases. You would instead go into one or more non-patent databases to search for references to this patent. The database to use is SciSearch, and possibly its related publication, Social SciSearch, if the patent is one that might be written about in social science literature. SciSearch is created especially for doing this kind of search to find citing articles. Here's a sample record in SciSearch. Each record is about one article. It provides a good abstract followed by a set of references, or in other words, the article's own footnotes. The references section is searchable using the RF field. So to find any articles that cite to a given patent or article, you would do a search in the RF field for the various terms that appear in the citation. Now, as you may have noticed, the third reference in this record 
is to our patent, US 468183. It's got the inventor's name, as it appears on the patent, B.D. Roth, along with the full title of the patent, the patent number in standard format, and other full details. But not all the references to this patent will look like this. In fact, most of them do not. Because, unlike patent databases, where you know what a patent number will look like, there's really no standardized way to cite a patent that is used by all authors of articles or across all scholarly publications. This record has our patent as reference number one, but all the author included was the number, not even identifying the country as U.S., and the inventor name only includes the last name and first initial. And this kind of citation appears multiple times for this patent in the database. So in order to do our best RF search, we should ask, what should we expect these references to include? To answer that question, I found 30 references to US 468183 in SciSearch, and only a few of them looked exactly alike. Here's a group of them where the references include a patent number, but not the title. Some don't include the country code, US, while others don't include the author name, or they don't have both of the author's first initials, and so on. And here are some of the citations that included the title, but again with many small differences. One of them replaces the year 1987 with the number 1000 in parentheses, and there are others like that. Another gives the year as 1986 instead of 1987, possibly using the filing year instead of the publication year, and these are just some examples. So the goal is to design a search in the RF field that will take this range of variations into account, while at the same time avoiding getting records that may share some part of your patent citation, but are really something else. This record, for example, refers to patent number 4681893, but not the U.S. patent with that number, and it's on a different subject. The best approach, I find, is to search a couple of different ways and then combine those result sets with OR. First, I search in the RF field for US 468183 in quotes as a phrase. That gets me 25 hits, which is most of them, so that's pretty good, but it still misses some. Then, if I search for the inventor's last name, Roth, together with the number 468183, I pick up the records that the first search did not, and I get a larger total of 27 results, but I miss some records that the first search did retrieve. I'm going to pause here to explain the connector. Notice that when I combine the word Roth with the number, I don't use the AND operator. I'm using the LINK connector, which is abbreviated LNK. And that's because if I use AND, I could get hits where one of the references includes the name Roth, while a different reference in the record contains the number 468183, but not for our patent. Using the LINK connector, LNK, means that these things have to appear together in the same reference or footnote. So you should use LNK when you combine different elements of a reference in doing an RF search in SciSearch. Back to our strategy, after running these two searches, I can OR together the two sets of results, and this gets 30 hits, which as far as I can find is all of them. And based on what I've been showing you, you can try other combinations, run some test searches, and fine-tune your strategy, although in this case, that didn't add anything new to our results. But for practical purposes, the strategy on this slide is a suggestion that you can use as one good way to run the search. And this strategy will work with patents from other countries as well, but there is one kind of patent that's different enough to call for some additional tips, and that would be the WO or WIPO patents. So just to finish up, we'll look at a WO number. And these WO numbers tend to appear in a greater variety of formats compared to regular patents. Here's an example looking at a PDF of the original document. The WO number starts with the year of publication. 
In a dialog patent database, this number would appear without the slash as WO2005123669. And here are some of the ways this one patent appears in the references in SciSearch. And you can see there are variations in whether the year 2005 is treated as part of the patent number or placed apart from it, as well as differences in whether the title or author is stated in the reference. Another factor here is that once a WO publication enters the national phase and is issued as a patent in one or more countries, then those patents will have the same inventor and possibly the exact same title as the original WO document. But you might not want those citations to those other patents. With that in mind, I would suggest the approach shown here for WO publications. Again, you can experiment with the RF searches in SciSearch to find the combination that works best for you, but this strategy should work very well for you as a template. So that's it. In Parts 1 and 2, we've covered backward citations, including cited patents and cited literature, and then in forward citations, we've looked at citing patents and we've analyzed in some detail how to look in SciSearch for the citing literature. So you can find everything from the early development of an idea through the most current state of the art by using patent citations in dialogue. If you'd like more information, here are some links to additional resources. And if you have any questions or need some help, feel free to call the help desk at these numbers or email us at customer at dialogue.com. Thanks for using Dialogue and enjoy the rest of your day.